You're You're listening to to Death Death Metal Metal Disco. Disco. So you've been listening to me ramble on for quite some time about this, that, and the other. So allow me to ramble on briefly about how I operate this podcast. There's lots of options for how you want to post and host your podcast and put it out into the world. Uh, I did a lot of research on mine, and for me, I decided to go with Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard of Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's free. That was a big selling point to me. Free is good. Uh, I like free. There's also tools for creation to help you record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer or your tablet or whatever you're using. I find that to be effective. So we got free. We got uh, recording and editing. Both big deals. uh, Because they are. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify. It could be heard on Apple Podcasts, it could be heard on Google Podcasts, and many, many more. That is a huge time saver because I don't have to go to each of those things to upload. So I like that distribution right then and there. And again, it's free. You can make money from your podcast, if you're into that kind of thing, with no minimum listenership. That could be cool. I think you should try it. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So if you've been on the fence about making a podcast and the only thing holding you back is how you want to host it or create it or whatever, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's worth it. Hello, 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 my friends. Welcome back to the Death Metal Disco Podcast. It's me. Long time no see or no hear, as it were. Before I get started, I just want to apologize. I am recording in a hotel room, um, and I didn't bother setting up the pillow fort thing that uh, smart people would set up. And I'm using my uh, USB Apogee mic that's several years old now. It's a condenser microphone, and... Um, It's probably giving you a lot of room noise. I'm going to try and edit that out as best I can, but don't expect a lot, so I apologize in advance. And if you continue to listen to this, then props to you, and if you don't, I don't blame you. I have also been fighting a cold for the last two weeks, so that sucks. I'm extremely stuffy in the sinuses, Um, so that's a bummer. I may sound a little bit nasally. I don't know, having to mouth breathe a lot. And that's not cool. I don't like it. And because this room is, uh, this hotel is up next against, next to, this hotel is up against a highway. Um, I'm in North Carolina right now. There is quite a bit of traffic noise coming through, so hopefully that doesn't come through too much of the microphone. But, again, I apologize. Just apology after apology is all I do at the beginning of these things now, mostly because it takes me 17 years between episodes. Um... I don't really have any good excuses. I've just been fucking busy, as I've mentioned before. So, um, I wanted to record this uh, two weeks ago, but was not feeling well at all. Uh, I've taken many, many, many uh, COVID tests, and they've all been negative. So, at this point, I'm self-diagnosed as a head cold slash with a cough. Because the cough, this comes and goes, but... It hasn't been great. When I had COVID, it was a very dry cough. This one is uh, not so dry. I probably have bronchitis. I should probably go to a doctor. But here I am at a hotel in North Carolina, the Raleigh-Durham area. I think right now I'm specifically in Durham. My plan is to record three episodes this week to finish out the year. Um, I'm recording this one, and then I'll have two more, because that's how math works. So I may or may not do that. I may just have two episodes. Um, shit, I don't even know what time it is right now. It's a quarter to seven. I still need to get dinner sometime soon, so I might keep this one pretty brief, but this is all about movies, so I'm not talking about anything else, just movies that I finally watched. Uh, welcome back. I have fucking missed you people, and I, I, yeah, I just thank you guys for listening all the time. Thank you. If I could fucking hire a plane that carries one of those banners that says thank you, I would, but, uh, this podcast doesn't make any money, which is probably good because I'm lazy. 
Anyway, so the good news is, is that I finally got around to watching uh, some movies that I'll talk about. Um, I have an outline here. I've watched actually more than this, just because I crammed in a couple recently. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about those. Like, yesterday was, uh, or last night was Black Adam. I watched that. And then uh, the new Thor, Love and Thunder. I watched that yesterday, too. That one I watched on the plane. And really, neither one of them are noteworthy to me. So, not going to talk about them. I am going to talk about Bullet Train. Fucking Bullet Train. If you haven't seen Bullet Train, I very highly recommend Bullet Train. It is on Netflix now. Dun, dun. Bullet Train is probably one of the more fun movies that I've seen in recent history. Um, you know, big budget, a lot of CG, whatever. Uh, great cast. Like, the characters that they had in this movie were fucking bananas. Um... Yeah, Michael Shannon is the bad guy, and I don't really know if I like him in his character. Um, but I really, really, I love Brad Pitt in this movie. I like Brad Pitt as it is. I think he's he's great. And if you've ever seen True Romance, his character in that, even though you know, like most of that movie has a huge cast, there's a lot of people in there that are very well known. Um, and his character, especially for way back then, Brad Pitt was. You know, not really super well known. Um, his part was pretty small, but his character was great. Uh, this one reminded me very much of that. And something I do like about Brad Pitt is that he... I don't think I've ever seen him... Oh, I guess the Oceans movie. Oceans 11, 12, and 13. You know, he reprised those that character for two sequels after Oceans 11. I liked him in Oceans 11. Um, but I don't think he's done... Off the top of my head, I don't think he's done any other movies that had sequels or been a sequel, you know, never playing the same character more than once. And even all of his characters, they're just different enough um, that he's not, like, I don't see him being typecast as a specific type, like Johnny Depp. Once Johnny, Johnny Depp's always kind of played the weird, you know, the weird character. Um, once he was Jack Sparrow from whatever the fuck that movie was, Pirates of the Caribbean, everything he ever did after that really seemed to be just kind of extra, I guess, would be the one word I can think of that really talks about him that way. Uh, it's He just, I don't know, Brad Pitt is, is always good. Um, even his bad movies are generally pretty good. Uh, but yeah, he was amazing in this. And the, the whole the whole movie, the, the dude that played... Um, I can't forget, I totally didn't bother to write any of this shit down. The guy that played Kick-Ass in the movie Kick-Ass, he was in it. And I barely recognized him. I had to go back and actually look and Google and see if that was him. I thought it might have been. Um, I had no idea he was actually, I think he's British. Um, but yeah, I, I just, yeah. He was actually definitely a better actor in this movie. Granted, it's been a long time since Kick-Ass came out, so he's had some time. He was also in the Godzilla movie uh, in 2012. I didn't like him in that. Uh, yeah, he's better in this. He's really, really good in this. I like him and his, his, po his cohort in this, but Bullet Train, um, I was super stoked about it. It just looked, it's my kind of humor. It's kind of an action humor, uh, crime, murder mystery type of humor, but it was just very creative, very creative. And, you know, some of the fight scenes that they had in it were badass. Like I just, I just really liked it. So Bullet Train, highly fucking recommend it. I'm not going to give anything away. I'm not going to talk about it any more than that. Just watch Bullet Train, please. Do me a favor. Unrelated to Bullet Train and in a completely different vein is the movie called Fall. And it is like you think. Like, I'm falling. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, two girls who are uh, adrenaline junkies, adventure seekers who really like to go mountain climbing, etc., etc., um, they suffer a bit of a tragedy, and then a few years later, catches up, up to the presents. Present. <laughs> I said presents. It's almost Christmas. Um, fall was surprisingly good. I hadn't really heard about it until after it was already out on video on demand and whatever. And at first, I wasn't really going to watch it. Like, it just didn't seem appealing to me. But it actually, I didn't, I didn't mind it. There was some stuff that, uh, you know, if you can't separate... Um, the possibilities and you know if you could set aside reality for a little bit 
Fall was actually, it was, it was pretty good. It was pretty intense. It was very intense, I'm not going to lie. Uh, watching that on an airplane, that was um, that was kind of a risky move because, you know, I'm 30-something thousand feet, and these girls climb a, I think it was 2,000-foot radio tower and get stuck up there. Uh, so anyway, I, I was just talking about that, and I heard what sounded like a sneeze from my cat in this hotel room. She is not here with me. I have no cat, so I don't know what the fuck I heard. But it was creepy. So pause for dramatic effect for that. I also don't think this hotel is very populated. It's going through uh, renovations right now. And uh, tomorrow specifically, they're testing the fire alarms most of the day, but I'll be gone. So that's cool. Anyway, it's the week of Christmas, by the way. Uh, back to fall. Um, the two girls, one of the, both of the actresses that, that were the, played the main girls... They both did a pretty convincing job of being terrified. It didn't hurt that they're both pretty attractive ladies. I didn't recognize either of them, and I looked up, but I didn't put it on my outline to see the other things that they're in. So I don't even have that reference. The only person I recognized in the whole damn movie was uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, better known as Negan from The Walking Dead. And, you know, he was in, uh, uh, not Shameless, uh, Weeds as the father, blah, blah, blah. He seems to play a pretty good dad. Like That just seems to be his character. Not counting Negan. He's kind of a dick in that. And then the... Uh, I'm pretty sure it was him in The Watchmen. Can't remember his character name, but I liked him in that. Um, but Fall was really good. It was really, really, really intense. Completely... Completely implausible premise. Um, the, whole, the whole thing. It's not implausible for people to climb a radio tower. I think that happens on a regular basis. Uh, but it gets stuck up there, and then things just go really bad. Eh, not so much. But, you know, that's the whole idea is movies are about fantasy and blah, blah, blah. And this this was that. It was, I'm not going to lie, it was very, very, very intense in a lot of parts. Kind of predictable. Really predictable if you're paying attention to it. I was on a plane, and I was surprised at how much attention I could pay to it. But, you know, it was, it was good. It was worth a watch. So if you get to see it, you know, and you're not paying it, even if you are paying just a few bucks to rent it off of, uh, you know, Vudu or Amazon Prime or whatever, it's worth it. It should entertain you. If you're afraid of heights, probably don't. All right, then another one I watched on an airplane actually takes place mostly on an airplane. This one's a couple years old. I think it came out in 2020. Um... I looked it up, but I didn't write it down for my little outline. But it's more of a horror movie. Uh, it's along the lines of World War Z as far as vibe. Um, but it's called Blood Red Sky. Blood Red Sky. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Uh, it came very heavily recommended to me. My buddy Todd told me to watch it. A couple other people told me to watch it. Uh, if you know me, you know that I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of vampires. And not Twilight and their sparkly little bullshit. But like Dracula. Dracula's my jam. Like most of the versions of Dracula. And even the derivatives of Dracula that are not necessarily Dracula. But you know have that same type of vampire to them. That's what I get down on. I was obsessed with vampires when I was a, a child. You know growing up. I used to write about vampires all the time in my English class. Um. So much so that my honors English teacher in my freshman year, uh, he he gave me an A++ on an essay I wrote, but then said I seem to have an unhealthy obsession with the topic. I don't know. I don't know if it's unhealthy. It was an obsession, though. Um, that, that obsession has faded since then, and I think in part largely because there is just a lack of good vampire movies out there now. Um... I can't remember which vampire movie I saw before this that I think was probably one of the best vampire movies I've seen in a really long time. It's completely escaped me, so I can't even reference that now. And unless some of you can dive deep into the the treasures of my mind, sort through all the images of titties that I've just put there over the course of the years, um, maybe you'd figure that out, but I can't remember. So... Um, Blood Red Sky, basically, not to give it away, but uh, mother and her child are trying to come to New York City to get treatment for an illness that the mother has. 
Um, turns out that she's a vampire and has been battling this vampirism thing for a little while. And now they're on an international flight. I can't remember where they're coming from. Um, Eastern Europe somewhere. I can't remember. Uh, and shit gets real. A little bit of a hostage situation takes over the plane for unrelated reasons. And then Super Mom has to go and fuck shit up. And I'm not going to lie. She fucking, she killed it. Like, the chick that played the main the main girl, main lead female, she was phenomenal. I thought she was really really good. She had to play a monster. She had to play a concerned mob. Um, she had to play a victim. Had to cry a few times. And ultimately had to be a, just a badass beast. And she did all of those things really, really, really well. Really liked her. And I gave it the World War Z vibe uh, just because the turn times, the transition times from when somebody gets you know bitten or otherwise infected until they turn into a, a fucking spaz monster, was very quick. Very much like World War Z, another Brad Pitt movie that I liked. But, I mean, it, it had that same that same feel to it. And I didn't bother to look and see who directed it. But honestly, thinking back in hindsight now, because it's been, shit, probably two months since I watched it. Um, thinking back about it, it... It not only felt like World War Z, but it kind of had the same look stylistically to it. A lot of CG. Um, a ton of CG, actually. Uh, but this one, unlike Fall, is easy to set aside the reality aspect of it because it's fucking vampires on an airplane. And, you know, that's it's not an everyday thing. Which is good because I fly a lot, and that would be very weird. However, that would also fulfill potentially lifelong desire to be turned into a vampire sadly not the cool you know Bram Stoker's Dracula vampire where I'm like charming and handsome and when I turn into a monster chicks still really into me um or if I get nervous in a social situation I burst into a thousand baths you know not that type of vampire which really is the only type of vampire I'm very interested in becoming um or even like the interview Anne Rice vampires uh, you know, couldn't go out in the daylight, but, uh, you know, we're pretty cool, except extremely gay, which I'm not, but, uh, you know, they made it work. They, they did what they could. Anyway, Blood Red Sky, absolutely worth a watch. Um, I think I saw it on Netflix. I think it was released only on Netflix, but that's where I saw it. Again, I watched that on a plane, which made things a little more interesting. It bumps in the movie. It bumped on the plane. It was Kind of handy. Except for when the plane bumped too much, then I didn't like that at all. But that's a different thing. And lastly, uh, for this particular episode, um, I'm going to talk about Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Now, I went into Wakanda Forever with pretty low expectations. I didn't think it would be all that great. I didn't think it would be bad. I just didn't think it would be all that great. Uh, Chadwick Boseman died. He had cancer. I don't remember what kind of cancer he had, but apparently he'd been sick with it for a little while before it killed him. Um, and, you know, main character had a lot of love. Like, even just him as a person, he had a lot of love for him as an actor because of Black Panther. Um, personally, I didn't really care for the first one all that much. I didn't, maybe, but I think it was by the time I saw it, it had been out for a few months, and then I finally got around to watching it. It had been so overhyped to me that. It just didn't do it for me. Plus, I'm pretty tired of all the woke culture that seems to be not even included, but beaten into us in various movies and TV shows. Like, I I get it, but it just it's just getting old. And man, I was hearing weird sounds, and turns out there's a plastic bag next to my foot that my foot was touching, and I couldn't figure it out freaky. I thought maybe I had rats in this room and I was about to fucking lose my mind. Anyway, no rats. No mice even. No other critters except for me. I wish my cat was here though. I miss her. Anyway, back to Bozeman. Um, you know, he was looked at as an actual hero. Like so many people, adults, children looked up to him because of that movie and that character. And I thought that was cool for him. And then in hindsight, you know, I saw the memes from when the first one came about, about how 
quickly it seemed he got tired of having to do the Wakanda forever and cross your arms thing because everywhere he went, people were screaming Wakanda forever for him, to him. Uh, you know, it turns out later he's battling cancer and then fucking died, but, you know, that explains how he looks so run down because I'm sure keeping up appearances was exhausting. It might have been the only thing keeping him going for as long as he was because the outpouring of love that he had for that character in that movie was impressive. You don't see that very often. Maybe some of the superhero actors do. Um, speaking of which, I just saw that they fucking pulled the plug on Henry Cavill playing Superman anymore, which I haven't looked up to see if it's real or not, but that seems terrible. I really, really, really liked him as Superman, so I must have saw Man of Steel, I don't know, 15, 20 times? That's almost 10 years old now. So anyway, Wakanda Forever. I didn't have low expectations just based on how little the first one really impressed me like I didn't hate it or anything I just you know by the time I got to it it had been super 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 overhyped and I just didn't see what everybody else saw and I think partially because I'm not you know I'm not a minority um I didn't see it from that perspective and I keep an open mind about these things I'm thinking I just it was just overhyped and I had higher expectations for it it wasn't bad at all though this one this one I really, really, really liked. One thing I didn't like about the first one was the character Shuri. Shuri? Shuri? I don't know how you say her name. Shuri? Shuri? Um, that's his sister. And in the first one, there I don't know what it was about her. I just did not care for her. Uh, she was the nerdy, geeky sister scientist. Um, th this one, however, I have a totally different opinion of that character. I thought she was incredible I really 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 liked her um and I rooted for her there were some of the some of the things in this one that I didn't care for I didn't like Michael B Jordan in the first one his character was kind of brutal but it, he just uh I don't know it didn't he didn't seem to act in that one and that was kind of weird like you're in an African nation um you're an African tribesman basically in that movie and you don't have an accent. And I don't know, you know, if in the comics his character, whose name totally escapes me now, you know, wasn't actually living there and then he came back or something. I have no idea. But it just seemed, I don't know, like he put his own spin on it that maybe he shouldn't have. He didn't play the part of the African tribesman, I guess, maybe. I don't know. That sounds super racist and I apologize. But I there was something about him I just didn't care for. Um yeah, he, he's he got a spot in the new one, and, you know, I didn't care for him in this one either, but it was a small spot because his character died in the first one. So if you haven't seen it, sorry, I ruined it. What I really, really did like, and I keep saying really, really, um, was the cinematography. Granted, fuck, like 85% of the superhero movies and a lot of just even action movies these days are CGI. Um, and I saw a thing from Tarantino that said uh, CGI in movies are not considered real films. Like CGI heavy movies aren't considered real films. I don't agree with that at all. Um, they're just, you know, the new, the new, the new style. So granted, if you can pull off any part of a superhero movie without using CGI in a lot of it, you're going to end up back in the 90s with fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and... I do love that movie, but it's not the same. It's just not the same. Hard to tell a grand story with grand uh, scenery and all that without special effects and CGI make them look really good. And I saw it in IMAX 3D. Um, the lady friend and I were in Colorado Springs that weekend. It was the weekend of the Club Q shooting, which I'm sad I even brought up because it bums me out and then I need to go on another tirade about that shit like I did with the King Super shooting and I'm really sick of active shooters, but I digress. The cinematography, whether you want to call that or if you want to call it the, you know, CGI staging or what have you, I think was phenomenal in this one. Um, there were some visuals in that that were absolutely stunning and Along with that, the soundtrack, not not the movies that or not the music that they licensed for it, because there is 
there was quite a few songs in there, you know, mostly hip hop stuff. And I don't have a problem with hip hop, but new hip hop is generally terrible. Um, and there were some songs that just seemed like they were they were chosen for the song specifically, but just randomly placed. And I didn't get that, so didn't care for those too much. Um, I can't think of what they were off the top of my head, but the original score that was written for the movie, well, at least I assume it was written for the movie, compared or combined with the cinematography for a few scenes, um, I I don't get goosebumps when I go to the movies too often, and I definitely got goosebumps two or three times during this, and it's a two and a half hour movie. Um, it was it was very dark. There had some had some sadness to it, but I think it was it was done so much better. And granted, I should probably watch the first one again just to refresh my memory. But uh, I don't know. I I really really did like it. And one thing I also really liked about it is it wasn't uh, when I told people I went and saw it, they said how woke was it? And these, I mean, one of them's my my Mexican friend, and another one is uh, he's a white guy. But um, when you tell somebody you go see a movie a sequel to a movie, that is, and they first ask you how woke was it or is it too woke? Um, I mean, it's hard to say anything about that without pissing people off, but it wasn't. It it didn't have a lot of the PC woke culture that some movies have, like the first one. I don't even remember the first one having a ton of it, but... Um, some movies, definitely, it's out there, and I don't think these things not need to be talked about or shown, but there is such a thing as too much, and, you know, if your whole whole movie is just completely all about the woke vibe, then, you know, I'm not going to care for it at all. This one, they really didn't. They had a couple jokes about colonizers. Um, one was earlier on, and one was towards the end, and they were well-timed and well-placed, and they weren't just, you know, there to be there. Like, they fit. And I think that's what matters. It's not exactly what you say, but how you say it, you know. And that's a big thing. Um, throwing in the opportunity for woke, woke references just to have woke references doesn't make any sense to me. But if it fits along with the overall scheme and the overall dialogue, fuck, man, throw it in. Just like, you know, you, you say that you don't like... Uh, black licorice to me, I'm probably going to call you a racist. That's what I do. That's how I do it. Uh, these were kind of along that same line. Um, but they were about colonizers. So, you know, teach their own. And one thing I really liked about the new one, Wakanda Forever, was the character, um, the antagonist character. I cannot remember his name to save my life, either the actor or the character's name now. Uh, but basically... Um, He's like a legend from Mayan culture, and I'd, I'd never heard of the actor before. I think he was new. I think it even said it was introducing him, but that might have been for somebody else. Uh, but this guy, he was uh, thoroughly convincing as the best way I could think of him as the gentleman bad guy, the gentleman devil almost. Like he is straight up super brutal, but incredibly polite. As long as you're going along with his plan. And you don't see that really well done in a lot of movies. Um, oh, fuck. What's his name? Inglorious Bastards. Uh, the Nazi guy who... I, th I don't know if he, was, if he won or if he was nominated for an Oscar for that movie. But he was fucking phenomenal. Like, like just phenomenal as the SS uh, soldier in the Nazis in Inglorious Bastards. That's kind of the same vibe I got from this Mayan dude in uh, Wakanda Forever. He was just like perfectly and totally composed and polite when talking to people that, you know, were out to get him. Um, and then when he was mad, he was incredibly brutal. And I like that juxtaposition. I always have. Um, I watched, I think, the first two seasons of the show Outlander and the... Uh, antagonist character in the first season was insanely, insanely brutal. Had some of the most brutal shit going on. 
and I don't really even know if he if he did the whole gentleman thing like I'm thinking. Maybe I just I admired his character's level of brutality, I guess, is the way to think of it. I don't know why. Like I'm a pretty nice guy. I could never do these things to other people, especially just because. Like I don't know why I'm always fascinated by that, but I don't know. Something about that character. Um I loved him and I hated him a lot. Because he did some really heinous shit. So, I don't know. But the Mayan character in this one, whose name I didn't write down. He was awesome. The guy was awesome. Um, and if I ever see him in anything else, like I'll expect awesome results. He he should know this and somebody should let him know that I, I demand greatness from him. Because I really liked him. So, yeah. So, that's my spiel about Wakanda forever. Um, I'm probably not going to edit this right now. I'm going to go get dinner somewhere. Hungry. Then I'll come back and edit this, maybe record the next episode. I'm going to try and get all three of these out this week, maybe one coming next week, so that the week between Christmas and New Year's, it is currently Monday, the 19th, and I got a lot of shit on my plate this week. I've been very busy, and maybe one of these episodes I'll throw in what I've been doing. Might even do a wrap-up episode. I didn't have shit going on with this podcast, but... I was pretty busy this year, so maybe I'll do something there. Anyway, I really, 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 really appreciate everybody who's listened to this for even two minutes. Um, I don't really know how to show you that, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if this is the last thing you, uh, not the last thing, but the last episode you listened to of this before Christmas, I hope you have a good Christmas or Hanukkah. I don't even know if Hanukkah's come and gone yet. I haven't looked. Whatever you celebrate, if anything, I hope you're having a good one of it. So do that. Otherwise, happy Sunday to you on the 25th. I love you all. Thank Thank you for listening to Death Metal Disco. Disco.